I think there's like a few different theories out there of how the story could end. I think it's just been narrowed down in the last few chapters. There was always a bit of a, a chat between, oh, is it historical ending or are we going not ahistorical? Or... Basically, the, the major ones have always been like bad ending and good ending. Does, does everybody get killed or does villain succeed as as Thor's ideal? With every chapter, it seems we get more specific on what an ending would look like. You had like your theory, but then I think you may have had like a recent change in mind. You kind of thought it was going to be a more happy ending, maybe. Now, my original thought a long time ago, before Leaf got old, was that like Leaf would die in the final chapter and they would go to his funeral and it would be like kind of bittersweet because Leaf is dead, but ultimately the Vinland had succeeded at least temporarily mm -hmm. to the point where we see it at the end of the manga. I don't think Leaf is going to end up on Vinland. Maybe they'll take his... Ooh, well, maybe they'll Leaf bury dies, his dead body, yeah. Yeah. People who could, like, maybe turn up in Vinland. We were, we were talking about this on Kyle's video, so yeah. if you want to go check that out on uh, Secondary Entertainment. We yes. talked about chapter 88, 89, and 90, and then we also released another video. Well, he released it um, for an extra on chapter 90. And we kind of talked quickly about, like, yes. who could turn up Envenant. And I mean, the most wacky out there would be like people from the farmland. So like Snake, Omar, or Thorgill. Our brother Thorgill is swimming the whole way there. <laughs> the first transatlantic swimmer. I mean, yes. he's got some big lungs on him. We know he can, so... Uh... He's a strong boy. <laughs> he's a strong boy indeed. But the, the end of the farmland arc, his panel is kind of like, in retrospect, the story is over. He was never seen again. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting if you think about it. Like the narrator has seen the whole thing, I guess. And he knows that Thorgill will indeed never appear in the story again. It'd be, I mean, it'd be interesting to catch up with Snake in there, but I don't know, like, yeah. Yukimura is so tight thematically that, like, I'm not sure why he'd bring them over. They're probably not coming back, I think, is the point we were getting at. Yeah, <laughs> most likely not. I think they're probably the least likely. Um, and then yeah. I think probably next on the list is Ilva and, like, the Iceland people. Effectively, I like. In terms of them not coming? Yeah, I think they're probably not going to come. Um, huh. And then I'd probably put Canute there as well. I mean, it would, like. I mean, that's where you're like, oh my word, we're not going historical if Canute just turns up in Vinland. That yeah. would be, like, kind of insane. Like, that's definitely bending the reality a little bit. Getting into the less crazy, but still improbable, I think Thorkel could just turn up. That would be pretty funny it um, would be wacky like it, he could pull it off if thorkel just shows up and, and makes a wacky face you you almost just go with it he's got cordelia like that would be interesting like that's true too like um and then thorfinn and like thorfinn still owes him a duel that's another thing so like if, maybe he has to fight thorkel yeah, that's, it. that's it he shows up because he wants to fight and it's a big funny meme and he sticks around or and he then, leaves right afterwards, just so we get one appearance or something. And yeah, and then you could have choose to have like a tragic ending to Thor, Thorkel's character where he do, uh, doesn't get to find out what Thor's is talking about with a true warrior, or Thorfinn could teach oh, Thorkel right. what a true warrior is. Um, I mean, I, I people would complain so much about it, I reckon. People would be like, no way, how could, how could Thor... But Thorkel knows about Vinland, and yeah. Thorkel is wacky enough just to be like, boys, we're sailing. I mean, you know, <laughs> we're going yeah, his little direction. second in command will be like <laughs> complaining, like, why did you bring us all this way? Yeah. And now you just want us to head straight back? It'll yeah. be funny. Now that I think about it, Vinland Saga kind of works in this kind of way of like these desperate characters that we meet all over the place that Thorfinn kind of interacts with and we never see again. And I kind of like it in that sense mm. of like, we're, we're probably never going to see Sigig again. Or yeah. we might get a wrap-up like panel with Sigig, happy with his family or something. But Sigig's probably not coming to Vinland. He's probably not going back to uh, to Hafton or anything. I assume no. we're going to get like a wrap-up with Hafton or something. Mm. The, them and Snake and, and even the, the two brothers uh, that Asklad sends off. I like that sort of like we, we check in in certain time periods with these characters and then they sort of go off and, and live their lives. This is a very weird, out there, uh, niche reference. There was a book we read in grade eight called like Blueback. Now this this book is kind of like a compilation of this person's life and their relation with the, with the fish. It's actually more so about the fish, I think, because I think his father is friends with the fish and then he takes his kid and then the kid becomes friends with the fish uh, and it's like every holiday they come back and it's sort of like this 
this compilation of his life, chapters will skip time a lot. So it'll be like him as a kid, as a really little kid, then him as an older kid playing with it. And like, he might bring his best friend the next chapter to play with it. And then he's like 15 and it's first is his first girlfriend. And he like kisses her and the, the fish is around. And then it's like, they get married and then they go and swim with the fish. And then his kids come and meet the fish. And it's just sort of like, it skips time a lot. And it, and it feels like kind of this compilation rather than this like, deep in-depth through line of this person's life. I think Vinland Saga has this vibe a lot. And Vinland Saga very much feels, it doesn't feel like Thorfinn is the center of the world. It feels like he sort of touches these people's lives. Like Vinland is kind of tangentially, conceptually a way to save the world in a sense of to creating a better world or, or a heaven on earth, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not like Thor, it's not like Attack on Titan where like Thorfinn has to succeed or the world ends. It's not that grand in scale. Um, it's more about Thorfinn leaving the world to try and create his own. I think this is probably where actually the Baltic Sea War, almost my issue with Baltic Sea War, which is like probably the only reason why like it didn't hit right at least the first time I read it with me as much is because it almost feels too focused on Thorfinn. There is like a strong secondary character in all those arcs, like Einar and Askelide, whereas the Baltic Sea War is kind of Thorfinn, 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 carrying the weight a lot of the time. Despite this, you still have like this feeling of like, we'll just take out a chapter just to be with someone, whether it is with like in the yeah. prologue with that girl who had, who stole the ring, um, you know, oh, just to get- guys in the Baltic Sea War. Yeah. Carly and stuff. Yeah, or like in the Baltic Sea War, you get a lot of perspective from the actual generic soldiers and they're like eating sandwiches together yeah, after war there's... or something. So it's, it's nice just to be like, yeah, let's not focus on the main group and just focus on the normal people. And it, like, it gives a feeling that the world is much larger and much more just filled yes. up. I don't think I tied it in well to the blueback thing. Yeah. I think it's kind of the part of the point was that Villain Saga is very uh, lenient with using time skips a lot, and it'll just do like two year time skips, but certain things will be different. And, you, and it's, it feels like, oh, we're not getting every detail about Thorfinn's life in the same way we kind of get like every detail about Guts's life or Eren's life. In, in the book, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Bring Bacon's it back, bring it back. Point. I wanted to make this. In the book, it's like, it's not like he swims with the fish every day. It's just sort of like every time something major in his life happens, he like comes back and is like, I haven't seen the fish in like three years. Um, and like the fish is around. And I'm sure it has, I'm sure that book is about a bunch of thematic things that my grade eight brain was just like literal fish swimming. Um, <laughs> and I was being stupid. And probably every time he goes back, it's representative of something. But I feel like that's with Thorfinn where like we'll time skip and they'll, they'll him and Gudrid are together and we'll time skip again and his uh, there'll always be kind of something different and uh, people I feel like people are a little mad sometimes that like things get skipped in time skips in Vinland mm. Saga and I don't think it's just the Greece example but that's kind oh, of I mean I like after about. the prologue people were like like even even with yes, Canoe, like yes. those those like that's the perfect like, example I think how is Thorfinn a slave why doesn't he just beat everybody up and run away but it's like no he lost his he's lost his will to live I, that's I I mean I like honestly I don't think anything's missing the time skip for Thorfinn because it's literally irrelevant I think more stuff is lost from Canute's like political angle and so people who are really yes. into the politics of villain saga like oh how would Canute like fight with his brother yeah. like surely there's a lot of things that needs to be resolved and Yukimo's just like. That's not what the story's about, bro, so I'm not showing it. Speaking of that, I guess that's kind of relevant to this discussion. About how many chapters do we have? Because he gave us a number, right? Yeah, so if we go back to my... I, I made, like, a Reddit post in 2019 after he made that, like, tweet waste. It's the final arc. So this is from chapter 167. So that's the start of the final arc. Yeah. There's uh, a thousand pages left. And the calculations I did at the time, which I'll probably slightly off, said that he'd finish out... 214 if he sticks exactly to that 1000 pages 214 i'm telling you bacon orphan's dead next chapter we gotta rush <laughs> through this i mean i'll say this right out now like i am happy for any ending with villain saga like theoretically in my head i'm yeah. sure i'll find a way to like it um i trust yukimura and his skills but even if it is like the worst thing ever i've enjoyed so much of the manga so far and i yeah. don't think like i feel like people do give it a bit like you know there's the meme about that ending is paramount i think the ways in which i envisioned a villain saga ending being controversial like if i had imagined it like two or three years ago it would have been like whether or not if, if the last chapter was them arriving at Vinland, then I feel like it could have been controversial if they get there and it doesn't feel satisfying. But the fact that we are already at Vinland, I feel like, I don't know how it could be disappointing at this point. 
maybe he does some sort of ambiguous ending and that pisses some people off. I'm down. Give me the ambiguous I th ending. I think actually an ahistorical ending would be the most annoying to people. Uh, I feel like that's where we're going, by the way. Yeah, yeah maybe. You, um, you initially, so like before, I guess, the, the bombshell cha chapter, as we, for you, the big, big yeah. uh, 89, uh, you were very much like, I'm happy for this just to end um, with all the more yeah, happy. Yeah, that's my idea about it being the whole last arc just being like slice of life wrap up like an epilogue over like 50 chapters i was like yeah just do it just have them be happy and 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 civilization build and have little meme things and have don't have hyald have to in a split second decision forgive thorfinn and love him just have her sleep in the woods with a bear and slowly get over it yeah but I think a lot of people wouldn't be happy with that. But yes, that was my idea. I like that. I hope something does that someday. I don't think Villain Saga is going to do that because we clearly have conflict a brewing with uh, the native people and something's going to happen. This prick's got a sword or whatever. It's the calm before the storm. And it really feels like that. I, but I just wonder when the, you know, the trigger will be pulled on it and, like, and it'll start to unravel. Because mm. this kind of same thing with the farmland duck. You kind of start off and you're like, all right, you know, slavery you know, not the best position to be, but they're going to work their way out. You know, they're making friends. You I know. really like those early farmland chapters, by it's, the way. I think they're fucking sick. Oh, they are so building, good. Make the farm. Like, ah, ha, good stuff. The fact that you are like so invested in these two, two lovable boys trying to get a horse and you're just like, yes, they got a horse. Now they can plow some fields. They go. And then uh, Kettle goes to Canute and Omar ruins everything. And then like Canute just like, mm -hmm. and then it just like comes apart the seams and, um, I know Sinu comes in back into the, the Thorfinn fray. Oh, it's, and it's, then Arnid, and then oh, it's build. so oh, it's just like oh, it's just a ride of emotion, and I imagine like so they've got so many things to kind of think that stuff could have wrong could go wrong. Like first of all, you've got the rats on yeah. the boats which haven't been addressed. Maybe it's just going to be like mm -hmm. a little bit of an Easter egg saying that oh yeah, rats were on ships at the time or something like that. Um, you could also have probably I mean, not. You've got the sword and. Cordelia just being this ticking time bomb. I think Cordelia will actually be probably yeah. one of the focuses of the conflict because the native people have pointed her out as being massive, strong, and scary. Everybody yeah. kind of assumes that she she's the strongest warrior when Thorfinn probably is, but because Thorfinn's small, haha, -ha, small man can't can't I fight. Could, I could see. I just had the flash of an idea of of uh, Cordelia being a damsel almost uh, to sort of subvert some tropes of like. Uh, the, the trans girl gets to be the damsel in distress who they all think is going to be this big warrior and Thorfinn has to rush in to save her or something. Mm. I just got that flash of an idea and that, that being how she's incorporated into some sort of final thing. Obviously, the setup is there. There's a reason why she is the character to have seen uh, the bloke with the sword. Mm -hmm. um, kind of because everybody else would have just screamed about it and go and go, go tell Thorfinn. That was yeah. A bad sentence. I could also see like, uh, have you read of Mice and Men? Um, like, I'm gonna make another reference to a book that I read no, back I in school. So. Well, of Mice and Men is about two two men, one small guy called George and one big guy called Lenny. And Lenny is kind of shown to be mentally not as with it, so probably on the spectrum of some sort. I'm not. Is back he the then, big one or the little one? He's the big guy. I forgot and so the he's end, funny. Lenny, he's he's not the smartest, smartest guy, but he's very strong. But he, the conflict of the story eventually comes to a point where he accidentally does something awful because he doesn't realize his strength. And so maybe Cordelia will have a similar thing. One thing in the chapter where you've got Nesquadjija, which is the native girl uh, running around with, you know, mm. she meets bug eyes at the end. She turns a corner and you look at the expression on Cordelia's face and she's like carrying this massive log. And she's like, oh, sorry. Like she's very kind and like not scary, but like the, the shading and effects around her make her look terrifying. Like, it's, mm. it's a really interesting page where, Matter like, perception. exactly. I mean, I'm also looking forward to, there's, like, this great page where, like, some guys are talking about Thorfinn and, like, how supposedly he was, like, the, like, he, on the battlefield, he was, like, Fenrir or something like that. And yeah. there's all these true stories that Bug Eye has told them, but because Bug Eye said it, everybody's like, that's not true. Yeah, Bug Eye is a liar. And but one of my favorite tropes is where, like, like, you know, when yeah, Thorfinn will reveal know. his strength to them and, yeah. like, be like, so what is, there's like a chapter in the Baldur's Sea arc, 129. I, I remember the number. I don't know why I remember that number, but like Thorfinn is fighting all in. the, all the Yorms Viking like one on one, and it's just so cathartic just to be like, yeah, like Thorfinn. Thorfinn will throw hands anytime, you know, like if he needs yeah, to. Yeah, I remember this chapter. Oh, it's so good. It's it's also like the Snake and Thorfinn fight where you have like, 
you know both these guys are incredibly that is strong. The same thing, yeah. And then they just realize, oh crap, the other guy is super strong as well. But like in this arc, yeah. I don't think anybody's on Thorfinn's level. But you know, either feel... will be shown hubris or something like that. I'm not sure. It'll, it'll yeah. be super cool. Uh, the release, it is. It is a great fucking yeah. trope. And uh, I'm going to bring it back to, uh, it's not going to be you referencing Berserk this time, it's going to be me, because one of the, go ahead, when uh, when go Guts, ahead. Guts is, um, I think it's there in like Farnese's, this is when you meet Roderick for the first time, and they're like, like this bull, and I, th I and like Guts turns up with his massive sword, and then like all these kind of posh aristocrats oh, yes. are looking at him, yes. and it's like, what is this guy the with tiger. this massive sword or whatever, and this tiger just turns up, and Guts just absolutely just destroys him and it's just cathartic where you're just like ah these these people they don't know like the real world they don't know our boy yeah. guts like we do you know? of, let me gush about berserk for like two more sentences you do all right it, you do it, you part do the it. best part is that is that there are people there that do remember guts to show like consistently in the timeline like i can't mm. remember oh my god i forgot the bros names the two like no young nobles that are in the entire series that somehow survived the entire way um there's oh, the blonde man. one and the one with black hair yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Mulan and something, but one of them is there, and they're like, "You're the, the Owen the, and the Laban, Hawks commander, dude." Who? What, Owen and Laban. Off stream, I would have got it, Miller. Don't get <laughs> fucked. I swear to God. Uh, but I don't remember if it's Owen or Laban. I think Laban is the blonde one, so I think it is Owen actually. Though Owen sounds like he has blonde name, but I might be thinking of Owen Hart, the wrestler, who's blonde. I said I would only do two sentences, but the but the fact that like he remembers him and he's like also there because he's important and he's at noble events. What a great! That's it's the scene black swordsman. And he, and he tells, uh, he's done the yeah. hundred. He fought the hundred men. What what, what name does he get? Man Slayer. Oh, it's like, it's just like it's just peak so cool. Good. It's just peak peak awesomeness. But, so. but uh, yeah, the other thing was that Isidro has like he he loves the Hawk Commander dude who killed a hundred men <laughs> and he's like his yes. idol and the reason why he does so. But he never found out. <laughs> Mira died before he could reveal it. But yes. Oh. Um, but the unknown badass that's secretly inside. The Snake example is so good because Snake is also such a good fighter. Yeah. And it's like the respect moment where they both realize how good each other are. Ah, what a moment. Now we've kind of talked about, I guess, how the ending is probably going to be bad, particularly with like how Yukimura has directly referred to the histor mm. history. I don't know. <laughs> you're saying that you're assuming the bad ending here, but I still don't know if I am. Okay, I think okay. I might be uh, still on the, the happy train over here. Yeah. Maybe we just don't go like 10 years in the future to when they weren't there anymore and it's just like ambiguous whether or not you want to believe history or mm. Thorfinn pulled it off. So there's this theory that is a bit out there, but Thorfinn dies and then Bug Eyes Thorfinn takes the moniker of Thorfinn, Thorfinn back Thorfinn, home. the legend. Ah, oh, yeah. this is great. Never mind. This is the best ending. Yeah, so there's there's that one. And it's I mean, like Bug Eyes... Bug, yeah, exactly. It's, it's like it's like Iron Fist Kettle, and also I heard this theory, which recently, but uh, the theory is that you know the old man Sverkul, so Kettle's father, was Iron Fist Kettle. That's another theory. Ah. So that's why Snake is like bonded with him and, and that's stuff. That's why Snake is friends with him. Yeah. Ah. So Sverkul was a warrior at some point. It's, it's said, and anyway, there's like a few small details and back of panels and stuff so there's there's a few cool stuff like that like you could have something like that and bug eyes is going on an arc where he's becoming much more mature and much more understanding yeah, and yeah. um so like it could be a thing where like maybe maybe the that's teaser a, at the last chapter idea. was maybe the teaser at the last chapter was where bug eyes thorfinn will become a true warrior and not thorfinn yes. <laughs> bug eyes let's go um, I, I think also with the ending we've also got the ships i love myself some shipping uh, we got Bug Eyes and oh, yes. Nesquaji. I wish we got the extra J at the end of that. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's a nice thing. is still making out with the Arnie statue. Going on. <laughs> maybe literally. Uh, maybe. Who else? Maybe. Are there any other ships? Who's Hiled hooking up with in the end, huh? Ah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, lots of people. Her and Ina have nothing in common. I was just thinking, like, major characters. Oh, I mean, they did have a moment where Hild gave Ina her, yeah, like, crossbow or, like, or, like, a backpack in the bulk sea walk. So, I mean, I doubt it. I don't think you you can move the romance back, guy. Back, back, ro romance. Yeah. Yeah, we, we gotta get some Bug Eyes really love here. I think Bug Eyes actually, the more I think about it, I think Bug Eyes is definitely getting a ship just because he had a bad romance with the yeah. other, I was her, like, I think her name was yes, actually Freja or something like that or whatever her. Are there any other potential ships? I don't think there really are. Like major characters that could pair up. So uh, he's already got his wife. Yeah, Cordelia. I mean, that would be interesting if Cordelia got a got a got a romance going. Maybe what? her and Maybe. Iva. Is she uh, straight? 
I don't know. The, yet the, the, all, all these, I mean, all these questions, I mean, who knows? Uh, Will Canute find a nice girl and forget about being bad? What well, <laughs> happened to Canute's not. sister? You know? That True, was... she was cute for like a second, right? And she looked like, she looked exactly like Canute, which I thought was hilarious. Like, you know, like, everyone was like, yeah. oh, Canute's a woman. And he was just like, <laughs> like wow, how this looks like, <laughs> it's Canute back with long hair? Oh, no, it's just his sister. Okay. <laughs> you also got some of the indigenous people and, like, how are they going to react? Because we don't know how they were going to react to the, the shaman's vision. Because he visions. explicitly yeah. says at the beginning that he's only there to advise. It's not his decision to make on what the tribe does. Um, yeah. But I reckon now he's going to be like, guys, we need to get them off this island. And then, like, I mean, he's seen some crazy fucking shit. Yeah, he's seen he's seen some invisible arrows and all, all that stuff. And maybe yes. people won't believe him, or that you you get a schism in the in in the tribe, and you know, so many things could happen. Um, it has to be like maybe one of them attacks and gets killed by the sword dude, and then there's a misunderstanding where Thorfinn is then questioned, and then he has to figure out that there's a sword dude, and then he has to resolve the conflict. Uh, like inside their own tribe with the sword dude and then maybe they make up and we have a happy ending but there's obviously the sword element and the potentially hostile native element and i feel like they're going to become one problem mm -hmm. um, and so for the good ending the happy ending uh yeah how do you envision it they'll just leave. do you think they'll leave but like or do you think well actually there's an just initial stay? skirmish like I just described, maybe one person on each side dies, but they learn to come over it, get over it. There's probably a fake out big climax where they're about to go to war, but Thorfinn comes up with a great idea to explain it or something. Bug Eyes and his wife jump out and they're like, hey, we love each other. You guys can love each other. And then they're like, okay. Maybe Hill does kill Thorfinn, but it's like mutually understanding. But I don't. I think don't think if that would work. Bad endings. That's Maybe. like a fun one. Yeah. All right, people, go check out Carl Entertainment. Uh, he's got some great videos on Attack on Titan, Villain Saga, and other stuff. But also go check out his other channel, Secondary Int, where we're going over the latest chapters of Villain Saga, and we'll probably continue to do so for the rest of time. If anybody in chat got my blueback thing, I'll give him a kiss. <laughs>